Hello, nice to see you here today. I'm Ivory Lanou, and my topic today is can you be both religious and spiritual? Before I get into that, I want to say a hello to my listeners in Rogersville, Tennessee. I'm so delighted to have you here with me. Thanks for tuning in week after week. It means a lot. This subject is interesting. I actually, um, I've done this myself. I, I'm just kind of going to start with a little thing here, though. Years ago, maybe 25 years ago, a coworker in mental health gave me this little sign. And if you're watching this, you'll see it. But I'm going to tell you what it says. It's a little tiny little framed quote. A religious person follows the teachings of his church. A spiritual person follows the guidance of his soul. That is a very abbreviated explanation. And I'm going to go into a lot more detailed explanation of the differences between the two. But, you know, it's it's really interesting. You might identify as being any combination of religious and spiritual and all the things between. But being religious doesn't automatically make you spiritual or vice versa. And the thing is, I heard many people, including myself, say, oh, I'm, I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. And I don't think it's that they're afraid of being labeled religious. I think that they're establishing independence in their thinking. But I think that some people do say that they make that distinction because they don't want to be under the rules and regulations of religion because spirituality has none. So I want to talk a little bit about these misunderstandings that can come up about this whole thing. So obviously I do spiritual work. You know, I work with angels as the core of my work. Um, I help people on their spiritual path, uh, help them reconnect with God. I mean, just all kinds of things. But I was at a, a social event at a family member's house and I heard a brother-in-law say about me to somebody oh, she's an atheist. And I stopped and I was just so stunned. And I said, what? And he said, well, aren't you? And I said, no, I'm not. I said, how could I possibly be an atheist when I work with angels and angels are the messengers of God? I said, I very deeply believe in God. Oh, oh, I didn't know. And I, I was offended. And then later I thought, no, it is just not understanding. It's it's a misunderstanding. It's not understanding, especially people who are really tied to a religion and have not stepped on a spiritual path would think things like that. So another one was my mother who, uh, oh my gosh, she found out I wasn't going to a specific church anymore. And she didn't say anything, but I found out a few years later, she thought that meant I didn't believe in God anymore. And I'm like, mom, I absolutely believe in God. I pray every day. I talk to my, I talk to God and my angels every day. Oh, 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 she was so relieved. And I'm thinking, why are, and it's again, like, if you don't go to church, then you must not believe in God. And that is just not the case, not for me. So uh, I want to talk about this, this whole thing. Like, can you be religious and spiritual at the same time? Think about the journey to spirituality. Most of us are raised within a religion or with specific beliefs, even if our family didn't go to church. So that's what you're taught. That's how you raise. Those are the ideas that are in your head early on. And then you learn about, you learn about God, you learn about angels, the golden rule, the 10 commandments, all those things. And they make sense. And then as you mature, many people so just kind of break away a little, they began developing their own, own thoughts that they may change religions, change churches, stop going to church, step on a spiritual path, take a break from all of it, because they are just trying to establish what they believe, not what they were raised to believe. So it's part of the independence of becoming an adult can also be your spiritual life. So then once these people break away, they wonder, what's it all about? That's when people usually come to me. What is life all about? Why am I here? What's my purpose? You know, so that actual question, those kind of questions often begins a person's quest on a spiritual journey, a path, that journey of discovery about themselves, God, and the meaning of life, the meaning of them, why they're here. 
I feel that the majority of people who consider themselves to be spiritual now did experience a period of time where they clung to religious beliefs or habits and began exploring spirituality. They were certainly both religious and spiritual during that time, right? So obviously it's possible. Uh, and I know plenty of people who uh, belong to religions like uh, Judaism and uh, Church of Latter-day Saints, Catholics, who come to me, which is not part of their faith belief, but they believe in what I do. So there, there's a, even within the people who identify as firmly religious, there is a little crossover with many people. I want to tell you a little bit about my personal journey that kind of reinforces this thought. I was raised Catholic and going to a, a Catholic mass where it was in Latin in Maryland. And then my parents switched us to American Lutheran when I was 15. As an adult, I did try several different churches and then I went to unity and I felt like I'd found home. And the only reason I stopped going to unity was because of empath overload. It, it was just terrible where the only church that was near me had a lot of people. When I went to a tiny unity church, I was okay. But when I went to the bigger ones, no matter where I sat in the room, I would start picking up people's sorrow, grief, fear, and I would end up sobbing and barely able have to like dash out of there and compose myself. And I couldn't go back in because I could, couldn't hold it together. And it wasn't about me. It was about picking up the emotions of other people who were in the church. Otherwise, I'd still be going to unity because I really like certain things about going to a church. But I believe in God, you know, so I don't go to church, but I deeply believe in God. I have a close relationship with my angels and angels in general. I follow the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule, and I search for answers beyond established religion. You know, I want to keep an open mind. I love having friends, and I have many friends, Baha'i faith, um, oh my goodness, Hindu, people who are uh, Buddhists, uh, any religion, if they're willing to have an open, calm, intelligent discussion about it or explain their beliefs to me, I really appreciate that. I really enjoy hearing about other people's beliefs and getting to understand it better. So I do believe I have a foot in both worlds very firmly, and I'm comfortable with that. I want to just talk about like defining religion. Religion commonly refers to an institution that has a set of organized practices and a structured belief system shared by those who are members of the institution. Their beliefs, which are often transcendental, are passed on from members to converts and are based on either a formally documented creed or established cultural practices. In either case, there are professionals within each religion who act in positions of leadership and who represent formal aspects of the institution. The leaders often carry out certain rituals regarding the core beliefs of the religion, which lays the foundation for how one's life should be lived according to that religion. As a community or a group sharing the same beliefs, religion functions as an extremely supportive social network. That's, that's the part I love so much. It creates practical implications for everyday behaviors and adherence to the beliefs, rituals, and practices of the group. Members of a religion often also follow distinctive dress codes, especially religious leaders, moral codes, and actions that are mandated by their their high power, God. A religious person is committed to following the guidelines set by this or her religion. They observe the rites and practices such as regularly attending church services on Sunday, observing the Sabbath for Jews, fasting during Ramadan for Muslims. And that brings up an interesting aspect because I think one thing that religion has, um, number one, it is a wonderful support system and so for people who are single, don't have a lot of family or estranged from their family, it gives you kind of an instant support. People who are there to help you if you run out of money, if you lose someone you're grieving, if you have a severe illness, somebody to help you. I mean, that's what they do for each other. I know, 
I've been part of it. The other thing is that it's a good support system for keeping people on track. If you step outside of what's accepted for the religion, somebody's going to bring it to your attention. When you're on the spiritual path, you really need to have a support system too. So I have Roz, my business partner. I have some friends who used to work with us. I have spiritual friends for oh, the one who gave me that little sign I talked about at the beginning, the little quote of people that I've been friends with for 25, 35 years, they're spiritual friends. And so we have a deal with each other. The biggest one is we ever see one of us stepping into ego, we must gently and lovingly let them know because that's so dangerous. And I know because we've done it for each other. If we think we're, we have wandered a little bit, like just not quite following the path we set for ourselves, we'll, we'll talk about it with the other. That's something religion provides. And you have to make sure if you're on a spiritual path, you create that little group to help provide it for you. And I call that your tribe, your spiritual circle, whatever you want to call it. It's really important. I just want to talk a little bit about defining spirituality because I have a lot of people who listen to my show who are deeply religious and might not really know what spirituality is. It's about one's soul and inner self. Being spiritual involves holding one's personal set of beliefs and practices and searching for the purpose of life. Each person's own definition of spirituality can vary throughout their lifetime, adapting. Spirituality is a universal, personalized experience, and everyone's experience is unique. One may describe a spiritual experience as being sacred or transcendent, or plainly a true sense of liveliness and feeling interconnected or pure gratitude. You can belong to a religious group and still be spiritual and vice versa. And I don't like labels, so be whatever you want to be. In fact, some may find that their spirituality is closely linked to a religion, while others may have their own personal relationship with a higher power. Others seek the meaning of life through their connections to nature or art. And I want to just say, I think it's wonderful if you're religious, wonderful. If you're spiritual, wonderful, because it means you're thinking about something other than yourself. You're thinking about your connection to God, to a higher power. You're thinking about how you can be a better person, how you can treat others better and be kinder, how we can maybe make a better world. We all need to just work together from whatever you identify yourself with. We're all trying to do good things. So I want to talk a little bit about religion versus spirituality. When it comes to that debate, neither is inherently good or bad. Spirituality is broader and more abstract than religion. Religion maintains a defined, tangible code of ethics, while spiritually is largely, largely indefinable. However, both methods of believing in something help people live happy, meaningful lives. I think that, again, whether you're religious or spiritual, you're not, you're stepped out of just working, sleeping, eating, and all the 3D needs. You are going into areas of life that have more deep meaning, and you are evolving as a person, and how you get there is your path. It doesn't matter. Follow what's in your heart. Follow what feels right for you. What matters is trying to be a better person all the time, trying to help the world be a better place. You know, what, what more is there? So let's talk about the difference between spirituality and religion. There's an individual versus group belief. So spirituality is the solitary experience of the divine primarily, while religion involves a group of people brought together by common faith or beliefs about the divine. Religion aims to build one's character. It shapes one's beliefs attitude and actions by giving importance to the adherence of rules. This unites people who share a religion as they share character traits and outlooks on life. But on the other hand, spirituality concentrates more on each person's individual soul. There are many religions in our world. And one thing most have in common is they preach the idea that their story is the right story. However, when someone is spiritual, they can pick out the things they believe from any religion and combine these truths to formulate their own set of beliefs. 
So when asking the question, can you be spiritual and religious? The answer is yes, if your true beliefs fall in line with a certain religion. However, many who are spiritual believe that everyone's ultimate truth is the same, despite any differences among them. And I'm one of them. I believe that our differences are very few and our ultimate truth is the same, no matter how we approach it. Spirituality focuses more on the quality of the message that is being offered than the differences in the details of the original story. For example, while Christian spirituality focuses more on the quality of the message being offered, I'm sorry, for example, while Christians may focus on the story of Moses and the Ten Commandments in detail, somebody who's spiritual may take away some broader messages from that story, such as being grateful for the things in one's life or always being honest. However, while one's spiritual beliefs are typically unique, Spirituality often reinforces the idea that all people are the same. The world has no perimeters, races, or cultural partitions. Humanity is all one, with love being at the core of everyone's being. Despite any possible ideological differences, all humans are the same consciousness. They're just expressed in different ways. Because every human's essence is the same, it means that any differences are superficial. This understanding invites people to be inspired to embrace each other and support each other on the path to enlightenment together. And I have to say, for me, it leads me to embrace all people on the world, uh, no matter where they are on their path, what their beliefs are, what their religion, it doesn't matter. I embrace them. I also, not that I support everything every person does, for sure, but I understand it certainly shows me where they are or aren't on a spiritual path or journey. And I try to forgive them and bless them and pray that they find something better. Um, another one is spirituality has no rules. A spiritual person often arrives at their own truths while they're developing their spirituality rather than following an ideology or set of rules. The experience can be, um, freeing for a lot of people, especially if they were raised in a very restrictive religion. But on the other hand, a religious person accepts the truth as defined by his or her religion. And these truths are often documented and shared with others. In religion, there's often a promise of punishment or reward for maintaining beliefs or following rituals. But for spirituality, the reward is just one's own inner peace. The fear of punishment for one's actions is often a principal factor in religion. Those practicing religion fear the consequences of the way they live their lives after they die. Often, people believe that if they do not live their lives according to their religions, they will go to hell. However, spirituality encourages people to focus their energy on positive things and to act based solely on love. When someone is spiritual, they do what they feel is right despite any potential consequences. Now, you got to realize that when they say doing right, they mean doing what seems like the godly thing to do. While spirituality does not threaten punishment for a life lived in contrast to a set of rules, it often addresses karma. This is a principle of cause and effect where one's actions or intentions have a direct impact on their future. This means that one who lives with good intentions and practices good deeds will experience happiness in the future while living with bad intentions may lead to future suffering. When wondering, am I religious or spiritual about yourself? Think about those rules you follow. Do you rely on the rituals of a certain church to carry you through times when your faith begins to wane? Do you count on an institution to organize your beliefs for you? Or do you pick and choose what you want to believe? These are important questions to consider when you're trying to determine if you are religious or spiritual. Can spirituality and religion coexist? Well, yes, a person can be both religious and spiritual at the same time. You can live your spiritual life and be religious by agreeing or disagreeing with the religious beliefs and following the spiritual truths. Spirituality and religions both offer a path to God realization. Let's find out how you can practice being both religious and spiritual. You may already be doing it, so it may not be anything you need to do, but just a confirmation of where you are. 
First, understand there's no one path toward God realization. You can realize God while being religious as well as by being spiritual. So first, read religious texts. How do you really get to know a religion if you're not going to do this? Try to read books of any religion you love. I, I Like I said, when friends, I meet friends who are different religions, and I find out about that, I ask them, do you have a book that I can read? And so I have a little library of different faiths, and I've read those books because there's often a lot in there that hasn't been covered in the discussion I had with the person, which leads to me having more questions because I'm very curious person. Uh, there are many books you can read and you'll gain a lot of knowledge about the real truths of religion because nowadays the so-called preachers of religions can misguide people from what the actual belief is. So you might want to go to like the book, the core book for that religion and read it. And that includes the Bible. I've read the Bible. My, my maternal grandmother was Southern Baptist, and I spent summers with her, and every night we read, took turns reading the Bible to each other, and that's all we read. The, oh, and the guidepost, she had Guidepost magazine, and I was a voracious reader, so I was reading that, and and um, and I went to catechism, so there was a lot of Bible reading there, too, and it was really illuminating for me. Number two, practice meditation. By practicing this skill, you can be both religious and spiritual at the same time. I want to remind you, meditation does not have to be formally sitting in the lotus position, chanting, om. Whatever gets you into that meditative state. I've had people tell me that they get into it washing dishes, sewing, working in the garden, going for walks. Um, frankly, I get into a meditative state playing piano or harp or my other instruments. I'll play them for hours and really lose track of time. And I've been in a very deep meditative state while I'm doing it. You can do rituals and meditate because in this way you are doing both outwardly through religious activity and inward work through spiritual activity. So it's a nice blend. Number three, realize that God is everywhere. He's not just in a building that your church tells you to go to. Nothing wrong with going to a church. Like I said, I went for many years. No many people who do. It's absolutely got a lot of benefits. But understand the truth that God is everywhere. He's in the air you breathe, the rain it falls on us, the soil, the sun, the water you drink. God is ever present. I hear people saying religion is bad, especially lately. There's a lot down on religion. And I think that's a very um, overreaching thing to say about religion as a whole. I think things can be carried too far in anything. But that's a judgment of another person's path towards God realization. Not everyone can pray in the same way or wants to pray in the same way. While some people feel close to God when they go to church or a synagogue, a temple, others feel that closeness to God when in nature and maybe even in a specific sort of setting. Some people love idol worshiping. I hate to call it that, but you know they like to go in and see the statues. And I did as a child. I, I absolutely love seeing my angel friends statues. They were bigger than life and Mother Mary and Jesus and all the statues that were there. I didn't feel like I was worshiping them, but I really loved seeing them. Um, other people don't like seeing that or having it. There are even some religions that have none of that in their church. I've been to some of those. And that's fine. It doesn't matter. You know, God is everywhere. Remember that a religious person can be spiritual and a spiritual person can be religious at the same time. What you need is a proper understanding of both to really know where you stand. Number four, embrace what you like. Be it religious practices or spiritual, embrace what feels right to you, what your soul is telling you is right. If you don't find something useful, just avoid it. Because you should do what you love at the end of the day. And if you love doing rituals, do it. If you love going to church, do it. If you love independent study and figuring things out on your own path, do that. But just pray to God or your higher power in whatever way you like. Just believe in God because it is important. There is a higher power out there. There's just too much evidence to the contrary. To be religious and spiritual one must embrace the way one likes to be close to God because there is no rule book. Hmm, interesting. 
So you're kind of setting your own truth without any limits. Spiritual people learn and develop their beliefs based on their own experience, while religious people learned it based on experiences in their church. So honestly, I think the answer is very clear here. Yes, you can be both religious and spiritual, and most of us either are right now or have been. If you really search your soul and you've ever been involved in a church, you are most likely to realize there's some part of you that still believes some aspect of that religion or appreciates some aspect of that religion. You have to know the reason that it, uh, spirituality, uh, somebody asked me this question, I promise I'd address it, I almost forgot, I'm so sorry. Can spirituality exist without religion? Yes, because spirituality is about being connected to a higher being. But religion is about believing in a particular belief system based on what that religion believes. And both can exist without one another. So many people go to church their whole lives and never step on a spiritual path and vice versa. It's okay. It's all right. We are all where we're meant to be doing things on our journey the way we're meant to at this time. Both spirituality and religion emphasize faith. Hence, they can both exist and cannot exist without each other. So uh, they're so intertwined. There's so much overlap between the two that I think we need to calm down about all of that and just, again, not label it. I've always been about the gray areas in life. I don't like black and white thinking. So let's look at the gray areas of life. And the gray areas of religion and spirituality is most of us are firmly in that gray area. So just something to think about. I'll just conclude with saying you are what you choose to be. You can be both religious and spiritual at the same time if you understand what they are and that it's possible to be both. You have to be willing to accept that thought. But the most important thing is to be a good human being. If you're religious and you're not doing that, you're failing. If you're spiritual and you're not doing that, you're failing. No matter if you are a religious or spiritual seeker, just be a humble being who's trying to be kind to yourself and others, trying to make things better in your area, in your world. In my opinion, being both religious and spiritual is a bonus because it gives you a bigger understanding and perspective and understanding what God is, the possibilities, and how you can realize him. And if you don't know what that means, it's just coming to a place where you not only believe in God, but you feel that in your heart. You feel that God presence in your heart. And, and I, I know um, somebody that I know locally, I'm not going to out him, but I love following his journey. Uh, he had an addiction. He did not believe in God. And he actually got involved with a church and he got up, got his addiction under control. He got married. He has a family. And I love his post, social media posts where he's radiant, just radiant, happy, just radiating this light and joy and talking about how joyful his life is. And, and I know what his life was before. So we all know somebody like that, right? Who has managed to have that God realization and it's life-changing. So I hope that this answered the question for you and that you realize not only is it possible, but it's likely you are both religious and spiritual at the same time. And it's okay. Let's start tearing down these walls of differences and looking at what makes us more similar. So hopefully this in, encourages you to do a little research and have some good discussions. If you have any questions, I'm always willing to hear them. You can put them on the, put them into the form where you're watching. You can email them to me. And that email is always in the show description. And tune in next Sunday. The topic is Archangel Raziel. Now that is the angel of mysteries. This will be a really interesting episode. Those of you who really love these archangel episodes are going to like this one. In the meantime, may your angels surround you. May your angels protect you every moment, every day of your life. I'll see you next week.